I'd like to call the meeting to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Here. 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 Uh, the proposed uh, public hearing is for proposed local law number one of the year 2017, a local law adopting a new chapter 195 regulation of food vendors. Uh, I do not have any names on the sheet signed up to speak. Would anyone in the audience like to speak regarding uh, the local law new chapter 195? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and the public session begins at 7.15. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Van Buren, clerk of the school. Yes. 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 Yes.
I'd like to start uh, and open the public session. I have two speakers signed up to speak. I ask that you step up to the podium, speak into the microphone, uh, state your name and address. The first speaker is Miles Becker. Mayor, councils, I think the hand out a compliment usually doesn't happen up here. I know it doesn't in the Facebook, YouTube, and all that other stuff. But you guys have done a tremendous job up here. You're bringing the city finances under control. You're getting that fire department, which it needed 30 years ago. I just want to tell you this about that fire department. I don't know if you guys know the history here, but when Bo Shane was in there, that steam station was giving out the money left and right, $12 million, okay? It's not anymore. But when Borden was in there, it still went on and on and on and on. More and more overtime, blah, blah, blah. Gearsy didn't care. Nobody cared. Nobody cared anymore. But you guys have shown a little spine, which is not happening in Washington, D.C. right now. Congratulations. You've done a good job. As far as I'm concerned, I've been watching it since 1990 up here. Where were you, Robbie, in 1990? <laughs> No problem, no problem, no problem. I don't mean... One last thing, Mayor. I couldn't resist after I listened to the radio today about the Affordable Care Act. Okay, now I've got to make a statement here. Okay, I ha it has nothing to do, but it might have something to do. When Nancy Pelosi and Barbara Steinbeck, or whatever her name is out there in California, and Gillibrand and Schumer who have gotten bought off by Obamacare when Obama said, you can have all the health care you want as long as you're siding with me. Now, I want to tell you what, okay? This is the reason why this country is in trouble. It is in trouble right now, and if Congress doesn't get their act together, I'd like to tell you what Clint Eastwood said about Congress. I'm going to make this very nice because he said something you can't say on the microphone. Okay? I'll use the word dummies. They are dummies, spineless, and they don't know what's good for the country. Nobody cares. Nobody cares here anymore. Only thinking about my pockets and what can I do to enhance them. You guys are showing leadership right now, which this country has needed for 40 years. This goes back to even LBJ. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the second speaker signed up is John Glennon. Mr. Mayor and Common Council and audience here, uh, I moved here in 1975 and uh, it was a quaint town. I came up here to visit, and uh, my wife and I had two kids, and we'd come out of uh, Seattle, Washington. And I liked the town, and it, it just seemed like a quaint place, and, you know, two bridges across the river, and, and it was just nice. So we, uh, we became part of a Christian outreach work that was here. And uh, eventually, in uh, 1976, purchased the house on East Third Street. And when we purchased the house, we were in a neighborhood. There were families, there were kids. People took care of their, of their, uh, their houses. There was, a, there was a couple of apartment houses, but they were well kept up. The one was owned by the former uh, chief of police here, Oswego, and he had this nice apartment and there was no noise at night. It was like he had really maintained and maintained the, the peace of the, of the neighborhood. But over those years that we've been there, we've seen the house next to us, which was operated, owned and operated by uh, a couple of uh, brothers who were insurance men. And they kept the place beautiful. It was, you know, and they, they had uh, teachers, they had different people, and it was like, a, there was a real encouragement, you know, you felt comfortable, you felt like you were in a neighborhood. 
But uh, then that house got passed around, and I saw this throughout the city, really. Uh, there were men who came in, and they saw an opportunity to purchase these houses and uh, break them up and put a lot of people into them. And uh, some of them were, were conscientious. I know several that were conscientious. They, they put money back into the, the places. But uh, there were a number of them, and one who actually eventually uh, got part of the uh, house next door to us, who could care less about the neighborhood. It was not his concern. He didn't, you know, um, and he'd move in. Uh, the people that he moved in were ob obviously not working. They, they were, they sleep all day, and then they would get their check, and they'd be at night, they would be carousing, and, you know, the F-bomb, and screaming, and fighting, and... And I've got kids I'm raising. And um, it was such a hardship on my wife. Man. My wife was just, she said, I love the house. I, I, I love, the, you know, but could we just move it out of here into, into a neighborhood? And in that neighborhood, we watched it just go downhill. And really the house next to us that, that was uh, apartments was just run down, just literally. I, I mean, the only time I ever saw the man who uh, was, uh, said he was purchasing the house um, was when they, he picked the check up. And then you never saw him. And there was garbage and there was, I mean, it was just, the place was just little, literally a, a mess. And, uh, and we lived with that, screaming, swearing, calling the police at three in the morning, you know, to come and they would come and, you know, everything quiet down, next thing you know, it was back again. And it, it, it just ruined the neighborhood. We had nice families that were living there. I mean, who wants to raise children around that? Um, we have businesses that, you know, they want to bring in employees. And they bring them in. They're looking at the neighborhoods. They're looking at, you know, what we're offering. And... Uh, I just see Oswego as, as having been really just like Obama's care of this country. We, we really took a nosedive in, in so many ways because if people don't care about the country, then they do whatever they, they plan in their mind. They're not considering anybody else. So um, my wife and I, we, we, we stuck it out uh, as long as we could, and then eventually my wife just... She just blew out. She just said, I can't, I, I'm not, she, we separated and we were separated for a couple of years. Then we divorced and then, and then, I, but I kept pursuing my wife because my wife was so important to me. I, I, and we finally started to work together, counseled and, you know, got help. And, and finally we remarried and, uh, but our kids, they all, they all moved they're all out west coast, north, northwest. Uh, you know, they don't want to be here because they don't see progress. But I do see, I agree with the gentleman that just spoke before us. I've seen a, a change of heart, a change of attitude in this, in this city. I've seen uh, you, Mr. Mayor, I see you stand for something and stick with it. I see, you know, and it's like there's, there's, at last, there seems like there's communication where you can actually talk and find somebody you, you can share with, and they're going to take your, your, your problem to heart and do something about it. Now, I've seen uh, things that I was suggesting years ago, is that we, we purchased some of these derelict places. The house next to us they had, has had two fires. They had one fire about eight years ago. Never did anything but put boards on the window. It was upstairs and in the back. Then we had a fire three years ago, and a man was killed in the upstairs bathroom, and that whole area was gutted, and nothing was ever done. Nothing for three years. And it turns out he hadn't paid back taxes, and, you know, and... It's just like, it was so discouraging. And I just want you to know that as, a, as a, a part of the populace of this area, you know, we're discouraged when we see the, the, the things that are going on. And now we seem to see some hope. I want to encourage you. 
I want to really encourage you, and, and because the decisions that you guys are making about purchasing these places that are, are and either gutting them and replacing them and putting them back on the tax roll or take, taking them down, I really strongly support that. I just tell you that that is an answer to prayer. <laughs> Thank you. There is uh, nobody else has signed up to speak. Would anyone in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, I will uh, close public session. Regular meeting starts at 730. It's your last state of the city, and you're going to miss it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, roll. Here. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Each year, pursuant to the Oswego City Charter, the mayor shall report to the Common Council a statement of the general affairs of the city, otherwise known as the State of the City Address. To fully understand the current state of the city and the progress we've made, it is necessary to recognize the context under which my administration began. Before I took office in 2016, the city of Oswego was plagued with years of indecision and inaction. Our taxpayers were burdened with a nearly 60% increase in property taxes over four years, which was in addition to significant increases in water and sewer fees. The city's code enforcement program and permitting system were ineffective and in a state of complete disarray. Our city's infrastructure and roads were deteriorating, our municipal buildings were neglected, and neighborhoods were losing value. The problems facing the city weren't intermittent. They persisted and compounded year after year, mayor after mayor, council after council for two decades. That changed in 2016. Guided by strong leadership and solution-oriented proposals, my administration and this common council got to work immediately upon taking office. Rather than focusing on any one exclusive group of people or specific issue, we worked together to make Oswego a better place for all residents. We demonstrated unprecedented levels of teamwork, support, and cooperation, for which I am extremely grateful. Those high levels of support and cooperation led, led to an unprecedented amount of success in our first year together. Our collective leadership, hard work, and dedication took our city from being a community that was continuously falling further and further behind to a community that now leads the central New York region in making positive changes, moving forward, and changing its identity. I'm proud to say that we are now a community that other communities point to and say, look at what Oswego is doing. In December of 2016, I delivered a year in review speech, summarizing our many significant successes. In an effort to add context to our city state, I'll recap the larger successes without the intention of slighting any other accomplishment or department. During our first year, we secured nearly $16 million in grant funding for several different areas within the community. The city of Oswego was one of 122 communities to compete for $10 million in downtown revitalization funding, and we were one of 10 communities to win that funding. Funding from the Downtown Revitalization Initiative has re-energized downtown and will ignite economic development projects by leveraging potentially $50 million in private investment, along with planning projects through the heart of our city. We were the recipient of over $3.5 million in New York State water grants to assist with projects required under the $85 million consent decree, helping to finance the projects with an alternate funding source other than relying slowly, solely on our ratepayers. We also took a bold but creative step to implement a commercial water rate for our larger users, ensuring fairness to our single-family homeowners. Being a waterfront community is our trademark, past administrations have failed to capitalize on this significant and valuable resource. We set out to create a comprehensive plan to take advantage of and to better utilize our waterfront. 
A waterfront feasibility study has been conducted, and we now have the ultimate vision for a waterfront that has been needed for decades. We can now begin to work to fulfill that vision. In addition to the grants I've already mentioned, we competed for and won $1 million in CFA funding for several different projects, most notably $590,000 to begin our execution of the waterfront plan. 2016 was a transformative year for the city of Oswego. Although the accomplishments I've outlined are significant, I'm confident that the work that has been done with our Code Enforcement Office and Department of Public Works will make the most significant positive difference in our community over the long term. With the help of the Common Council, we established a powerful and adamant Code Enforcement Office, not beholden to landlords, but to the folks who live in our neighborhoods, maintain their property, and care for our community. We've developed strategies to hold negligent landlords accountable, while, while empowering tenants and neighbors to band together to regulate landlords who have proven they can't regulate themselves. We've addressed some of the most notoriously blighted properties in the city and maintained the political willpower other administrations have lacked to see our efforts through. We've tripled the amount of yearly reported complaints and more than doubled the number of documented violations while shutting down properties that do not meet the basic and minimum housing standards. We've simplified and expedited the entire permitting and development process to support, accommodate, and encourage investment by our small business owners and local contractors. The Department of Public Works has undergone significant restructuring and changes to be more productive, effective, and efficient. We focused on the aesthetics of our city to improve curb appeal and pride, even during the winter months. We've invested in infrastructure, buildings, and equipment while deploying the DPW to address the long-lasting issues and to work to remedy decades of deferred maintenance. We paved approximately $850,000 of roadway, including the forks in the road intersection of State Route 104 and Hillside Avenue, which was in dire need of attention. We've invested an immense amount of time and resources into our parks and public facilities, as well as making it a priority to help our downtown small business owners by promptly removing snow, increasing attention and awareness to our downtown. Most significantly, we've made a concerted effort to expedite work requests from our residents and work orders from our city councilors. We made, we've made great strides in our first year with our code enforcement efforts in DPW, and we're just getting started. I've said before, and I'm confident as ever, that 2016 will be remembered as the year the city of Oswego turned the corner, embarked on a new beginning, rebranded, and reignited itself. We made difficult but positive changes. 10, 20, and 30 years from now, our residents will look back at 2016 as the year we began our resurgence and had the future of our community at the forefront of our decision making. The progress we've seen in such a short time is remarkable and is the product of a hardworking, thoughtful, and ambitious city administration comprised of dedicated and caring department heads. We should all appreciate the important work they do on a daily basis, and I sincerely appreciate the help they've provided me personally up to this point. While we enjoy the headlines of winning grant money, making significant positive changes, and succeeding at overcoming larger challenges, it is the day-to-day -day operations carried out by our departments and employees that have made the last 15 months so successful. We've had some tremendous success and a great deal of momentum up to this point. Now we must follow through with what we started. We must continue to work together to successfully implement all we accomplished in our first year together. We will need the same level of dedication and hard work from our departments and employees and I'll need the same cooperation and support from the Common Council. I take great pride in believing that our citizens believe in us collectively as a government and support the decisions and progress we're making. But given all that we accomplished in 2016, expectations for 2017 will be set high, and I intend to exceed those expectations. We will continue to build upon our code enforcement efforts by pushing the envelope and relentlessly patrolling consistently problematic landlords. We intend on maintaining our partnership with the County Land Bank, which has already proven to be productive and beneficial as we've submitted three more long-time dilapidated homes to be demolished. Those easily observed victories will continue to stack up as our Code Enforcement Office gains experience and continues to grow. Earlier this year, I, charged, I changed the City Section 8 HUD Housing Inspector to a full-time position. That move has already paid dividends. Since January, 279 HUD inspections have been completed. 73% of the inspected units failed their initial inspection, meaning they do not meet the bare minimum housing quality standards set forth by the federal government. 81% of the units that failed their initial inspection were written up, reinspected, and brought into compliance. 
Furthermore, I have instructed the Section 8 office to develop and provide me recommendations to stiffen the City HUD administrative plan. This is another tactic we will use to force landlords to provide tenants with the basic living standards while continuing to improve conditions in our neighborhoods. We also intend to revise the priority rating system for all income eligible applicants by providing priority consideration to those already demonstrated to be working or going to school. In addition, we will work to include New York State's adopted International Property Maintenance Code to strengthen and improve the housing quality standards for, for inspections. Lastly, I want to include a provision for all income eligible applicants receiving a City of Oswego HUD voucher to be linked to a workforce development program to help them search for a job and properly prepare them to enter the workforce. Yeah. Using a more thorough vetting process and by stiffening the guidelines and criteria in our administrative plan, I've ordered our Section 8 office to begin to limit and shrink the number of HUD vouchers issued in the City of Oswego gradually through attrition by one-third. In doing this, we allow ourselves to focus more time and energy on folks in our community looking for a hand up, not a hand out. We also can shift the focus and perception of our community development office from an office focused solely on low income housing to a more robust, economic development driven office while still providing adequate resources and assistance to those in our community who need and rely on it most. Earlier this year, we embarked on a rewrite of our city zoning code, another failure previous administrations was allowing the zoning code to be undermined, resulting in neighborhood degradation and fundamental planning blunders in every corner of our city. The zoning code update will provide continuity and guidance in terms of city planning and will reinforce and expedite the progress being made in restoring and revitalizing our neighborhoods by groups like the Oswego Renaissance Association. The Oswego Fire Department will have a new chief in 2017 with the appointment of Randy Griffin. Randy is a professional and a knowledgeable expert in fire service, emergency management, and homeland security. His leadership will undoubtedly bring stability, creativity, and diversity to the Oswego Fire Department. After a turbulent but necessary 2016, the department's best days are ahead of it. Under Chief Griffin's leadership, the Oswego Fire Department will become an even better department, enhancing operations and providing the best service to city residents. Tonight, we intend to follow up on our recent successes with the Camden Group at our wastewater facilities by introducing Camden Group to our city water plant. The initial proposal will enhance and improve operations at the water plant while saving the city at least $140,000 annually. Along the same lines, in 2016, we reduced the amount of money we spent on overtime by nearly 30% citywide, roughly $300,000. And in 2017, our top focus will continue to be finding new and creative ways to improve city services to taxpayers while minimizing tax and fee increases. We are also committed to address the issue of poverty in our community. Recently, I appointed the Lift Oswego Task Force to participate in the Empire State Poverty Reduction Initiative. Lift Oswego is a poverty reduction initiative funded by New York State with a mission to promote a network of community partners to create innovative and sustainable solutions to help individuals and families achieve their full potential in the city of Oswego. Partnering with Oswego County Opportunities, the Lift Oswego Task Force will work to, to, to develop goals and innovative strategies for helping individuals and families achieve their full potential. Similarly, we must acknowledge the presence of illegal drugs in our community and the resultant problems that are created. To assist in efforts to reduce illegal drug use, earlier this year the City of Oswego sent a police officer to a DARE training course so we could integrate the updated and improved DARE program into Oswego City Schools. I will also work diligently to forge new partnerships to help the City of Oswego combat the presence of illegal drugs in our community. In the very near future, I'll be announcing an exciting new initiative that capitalizes on these partnerships by establishing a program that can give, get drugs off our streets while helping folks in our community at a time when they need it most. Finally, consolidation has been a topic of conversation at the state level of government. Consolidation of services that saves taxpayer money is basic common sense. And I believe opportunities for, for consolidation should be considered whenever possible. After discussions with local government leaders of surrounding towns, I've made it clear that the city of Oswego is a partner and the partnership should be mutually beneficial. In 2017, I intend to improve and expand upon those partnerships and continue to work together with other local governments to better serve our residents. So what is the state of the city? The city of Oswego is back it's rejuvenated and it's moving forward with a tremendous amount of momentum. We are stronger now 
than at any point in recent history and getting stronger. And we're just getting started. I'd like to close my remarks by thanking the City of Oswego department heads, employees, and the Common Council. I'd also like to thank all the nonprofit organizations, civic clubs, volunteers, community organizers, our local labor union leaders, stakeholders, county, state, and federal officials, and all other supporters of this city who make this community what it is. Most importantly, I must thank the public, the City of Oswego residents, our constituents, for affording me the opportunity to serve my neighbors in my hometown as we all work together to make this community a better place to live and work each day. Thank you. Any of the counselors have any comments? Seeing none, Councillor Emmons. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for a fantastic speech. And uh, I, all I would like to say is that uh, many of you know my wife uh, owns a business and she sees city residents on a daily basis. And sometimes I think she thinks she has to fill in for me when folks come on in and saying this and that about the city. And, I think one of the things that she has consistently found, though, uh, is that city residents do feel good about what's happening within the city. They're feeling positive. Uh, they come and express that in, uh, in, in her shop on a daily basis. And so um, I think that uh, I think there has been a fundamental change, and uh, I'm excited to see that keep going. So I think we all should keep up the good work with that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other comments, Councillor Walker? Thank you. Uh, that was a nice speech. I ain't going to follow that one. But uh, I just really would like to thank all the city employees, department heads. They're doing a lot of work right now, helping, this, helping us all look good, doing our job. They're doing a lot more with a lot less. And they're making us look good, and I'd like to thank them. Amen. Yes. Any other comments? Seeing none, clerk, please call resolution 91. <coughs> Councillor Gozik, Councillor Reynolds, any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 92. Councillor Walker, Councillor Emmons, any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 93. Lachlan, Councillor Emmons. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 94. Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Gozik. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 95. Councillor Walker, Councillor Van Buren. Comments? Councillor Walker. Yes, thank you. I was approached uh, again this year from a gentleman to uh, get a lot of signatures to start renaming portions of Albany Street in a memorial. So they're putting up some beautiful signage up there. Everybody drives by, you see some beautiful signs, which we take down in the winter because we don't 
question why, why they're not using them. But he asked for another section for Harry Caruso, which he built a track in 1950, I believe it was. He was it was his domain up there, his castle. So I'd like to see this go through and have everybody support on. Thank you. Any other comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 96. Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Emmons, any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 97. Councillor Gozik, Councillor Walker. Any comments? Councillor Gozik. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody that had, uh, took part in making sure this was really going to happen this year. Um, Councillor Walker, in particular, for bringing it up. Um, Reynolds for working on it. All the councillors gave input. Um, Art Webb, who is um, with the Fat Cat um, Food Vendors. Um, a lot of work went into this. We um, met right after the last meeting to make sure um, hopefully this law will hold water. And I think the regulations hopefully will help um, to protect um, you know, local businesses, brick and mortar businesses out there that had concerns. Um, we'll get everything put together and get the map drawn up of where the vending is going to be. Um, hopefully this will be a boon to the city. And one more reason to um, you know, enjoy the beautiful waterfront if we work on revitalizing, as the mayor pointed out tonight. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention just briefly was, you know, for people that are worried, um, our community development director, um, Roderick, had pointed out that, um, you know, diversity, diversifying, um, you know, having different options for people. You know, a lot of this, people shouldn't be scared of it, but I think that people should look at it. And, you know, it's a free market system. You know, a little bit more free enterprise isn't going to hurt. A lot of these businesses might actually um, get to the point where they can start businesses, and we're going to see hopefully more people coming um, to eat and to enjoy the waterfront here. So I just wanted to thank everyone involved with it. I hope it's a success. Thank you. Any other comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Yes. 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 Or please call resolution 97. 98. All the right to come to the hearing regarding the local law number 2 of the year 2000 local law number 2 of the year 2000 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 Yes. 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 Or please call resolution 99. <coughs> Councillor Cordino, Councillor Emmons. No real update on this project other than their, the plan now is to take about uh, 1,000 stretch of about 1,000 feet of Route 48 uh, and move it over towards the country club. That's why uh, some of the trees recently come down uh, that bordered the country club last week. Uh, construction is still slated for uh, fall of 2017 uh, with the federal and state government paying for about 95% of the project. We're still responsible for 5%. Any other comments? <coughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 100. Councillor Walker, Councillor Van Buren. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Clerk, please call resolution 101. Councillor Van Buren, Councillor McLaughlin. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. 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 Or please call resolution 102. <laughs> Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Gozik. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 103. Councillor Emmons, Councillor Gozik, any comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Or please call resolution 104. Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, these are three more properties that we're turning over uh, to the county land bank. I mentioned in the speech how productive that's been. We turn these properties over uh, with the understanding that the three properties will be demolished. Any other comments? Councillor Walker. Thank you. This is one of the properties that Mr. Glenn was speaking about earlier in public session. He didn't know nothing was going to happen. But he's, I think he's pretty happy right now. So. And I'm glad this is going to happen in this one house because it's been an eyesore for quite a few years. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> 155 East 3rd Street, 152 East Oneida Street, 240 West 5th Street. Any other comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. 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 Or please call resolution 105. <clears throat> Councillor Van Buren, Councillor Walker. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 106. Councillor Cordino, Councillor McLaughlin. Comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 107. Councillor Van Buren. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 108. Councillor Walker, Councillor Emmons. Any comments? 
Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 109. Councillor Van Buren, Councillor Gozer. You remember last summer I had to issue a media advisory or warning asking city residents to uh, conserve water. Um, making this improvement uh, to the Dewar Street pump station will hopefully solve uh, that problem and uh, make sure that I never have to uh, send out a release to a waterfront community asking them to conserve water again. The trouble was we were we're taking in water from the lake just fine and treating the water just fine. It was actually the, the trouble was pumping it from the plant to the uh, reservoir tank uh, up in this area. So hopefully this pump station will fix that problem. Any comments? Councillor Cordino. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, remind everybody uh, this contingent fund uh, started out uh, at uh, $200,000 uh, at the beginning of the year. And uh, after this, if it is approved tonight, uh, that means there's about 75% left in that fund. And I understand that this uh, particular resolution is, uh, is important, uh, but at that rate, at that clip, using uh, the funds in the contingency account, uh, we're going to use it up uh, by the end of September. So I just want to remind uh, the council and the mayor that uh, you know, we uh, should uh, look at future uses of this account uh, very closely, because as I said, uh, at this rate, we've used 35% in the first quarter of the year. Uh, we'll use up the whole uh, account and use it at the same rate by the end of September. So uh, I think uh, we should uh, be careful how we spend the money going forward since it's uh, April uh, coming next week. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Clerk, please call resolution 110. Councillor Van Buren, Councillor Walker. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Any unfinished business to come before the council? Take the motion to adjourn. Councillor Van Buren, Councillor Evans. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Meeting is adjourned.